um, other people in the music industry that just seems to be displaying certain occultic signs in their music. And I was wondering if you could touch or elaborate on that just a little bit. Well, like I was trying to say a few minutes ago, if, if you want to talk about the powers that be, first of all, we have to understand who are they. And then when you're talking about uh, the powers that be, it's obvious that the way we use that terminology is the fact that they're already in existence, and, but they're hidden, but we don't know who they are. And then, for some strange reason, we have to identify what kind of power that these people actually have. Are you following me? Yes, I'm following you. So some people call them by different names. Some call them um, uh, the Knights of Rome, the Club of Rome. Some people call them the Bilderberg Group. Some people call it the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations. Some people call it the Trilateral Commission. Some people call it various different names. We've come to know in doing research that a lot of these names and organizations, such as Skull and Bones and other organizations, stem from um, the fact that uh, they derive from this entity called the Illuminati. The Illuminati are the illuminated ones. The Illuminati, uh, they're called, and what it means is holders of the light. And when you say holders of the light, we have to be able to define what kind of light. Are you following me? So when you yeah. talk about signs and symbols, we're talking about sacred symbols. We're talking about sacred symbols that were used for subversive purposes. Um, now, just to give you some research material, the whole Illuminati story is told on YouTube. Those that are listening right now, get your pen and piece of paper, because I need you to do take down this information for this homework assignment. Look up a man's name by the uh, look up a man by the name of uh, Myron Fagan. M Y R O N Fagan F A G A N Myron Fagan. Now, this gentleman told the entire the entire story of the Illuminati, and he actually says the Illuminati is actually the, um, the CFR, which is the Council on Foreign Relations in America. Are you following me? Yeah. All right, so now we have to understand this particular um, information because this is the basis of what all these organizations base their thing on. So Illuminati means holders of the light. Can we see signs and symbols, physical signs and symbols in America of the Illuminati's influence in America? Yes. We could go to New York, and we could go right where Wu-Tang is from, Staten Island, and we could see the Statue of Liberty, right or wrong. The right. Statue of Liberty is holding a torch. It wasn't put there by Americans. It was put there by the, um, the Freemasons from France as a gateway into uh, America. Are you following me? Yeah. The Statue of Liberty is holding a torch. Holders of the light. When the Olympics comes back around, right? When they interlock those six, seven, eight rings that they have representing different nations on the earth. And they have this torch going from country to country, from city to city, uniting the common, uh, the people with the common uh, energy, the demonic energy. Everyone grabs the torch and we run the torch through the particular cities. Holders of the light. That's the Illuminati's influence. Are you following me? Yeah. So when you, when you have a child that's young but very smart, we say that child is bright, right or wrong. You have a very right. bright child, right or wrong. That's the language of the Illuminati. When you see the influence of the bright lights in Hollywood, no one understands that the term Hollywood comes from a holly tree. And it's just the branches in the wood from the holly tree. And the holly wood, the meads, these people that practice occult science, these people that practice the black and white magic, all right, were called the meads, which is a root word to media, mediation. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And media stands for multi-ethnic destruction in America or maniac European devils in action. But if you look at who the Medes are, they practice black and white magic. They use this wood, the holly wood, to cast spells on people. So when you call the media in 
and they do their reporting, and you see it on Eyewitness News, CBS, and some of these, CNN, BBC, they're casting spells. They're going through rituals. So in school, you use the number two pencil. Look up on, on YouTube and find out what the number two pencil means and why you only have to take the test with the number two pencil. Are you following me? Then in school, they teach you cursive writing with the number two pencil, teaching you how to cast spells and curse. So you learn how to spell with the number two pencil. Are you following me? So the word that they use for the magic wands on the Disney Channel and Walt Disney and all these people, Cartoon Network, they use the number two pencil as, pencil as their wands to cast spells in Hollywood. Are you following me? So there's different signs and symbols that are right in front of our faces. I did a lecture entitled Hidden in Plain Sight, and I brought out all of these symbols. One famous symbol in hip-hop now is called the Baphomet. This is an hermaphrodite kind of figure, a goat, which is a male and female goat that they use. Um, it's actually the goat of Mendes that they use as, uh, as a sign and symbol that when you throw up this particular sign, you let the people know that are in charge, the Illuminati, the powers that be, as you say, to let you know that you're down with the program. I hope I answered that question, you know, thoroughly for you. Yeah, you broke it down. <laughs> um, okay, so um, let's 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 talk about what's going on with our youth right now. Or, or, or is is would you say that what's going on with our youth right now is being um, affected through the television and, and things of that nature through the tools that they use and the symbolism that they use? Is how is it? I mean, would you say that? Well, my control is one of the, the tools that they use. How they get you into uh, the, the, the uh, condition to be controlled is by using certain signs and symbols, frequencies, tones, colors, shapes, numbers, that they hide subconsciously in the frequency of the music and in the 23rd frame, I believe, on TVs and the movies. Look at the movie-going experience. You go, you pay your money, Right? Uh, automatically, you go in, and it's just like, like automatons. We go in, and we buy pop, butter, popcorn, and coke. You're actually buying cocaine, and you're buying this chemical called popcorn. Why do I call it a chemical? That butter is not really butter. But when you put it on the popcorn and you put it in the microwave, it becomes a chemical that lulls your subconscious mind to sleep. It's inducing you and lulling you to sleep so by the time you walk into a dark movie theater, you're already prepped. You're laying there, you're damn near dozing off. You're focusing in on a screen in the dark with the surround sound, and they're attacking your subconscious mind with frequencies and images. Go to uh, The Arrivals on YouTube. The Arrivals. A-R-R-I-V-A-L-S. The Arrivals. Go to number 10 and watch it through number 12, and you'll see exactly how they pull this off. When you leave the movie theater, you're almost punch drunk. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. You leave the movie theaters with your breast filled, wanting to be the hero, or wanting to be the damn damsel in distress, wanting to be a corny white girl to fall down in every damn horror flick. Are you following me? Right. So we have to understand it. So now to the small screen, they keep the small screen filled with nonsense. Channel Zero, I wrote a song with Public Enemy. Channel Zero is what we call it, which actually amounts to absolutely nothing. I don't care if it's the daytime stories or these unreality shows or MTV Cribs, Pimp My Ride, or whatever. Are you following me? Right. Absolutely nonsense. 